approximately a third appear to be civilians. No civilians. There was no blockade. There was a blockade of Gaza from the sea, from the land and from the air. There was a denial of the right of people of Gaza to travel outside of the Gaza Strip. There was a denial of the right of Gaza to export its products from any industries that exist in Gaza, hence the economic collapse that's going on. There was also an active policy of preventing sufficient levels of food, medicine, energy and other supplies getting into Gaza. Hence we have a humanitarian crisis, hence we have massive levels of unemployment, hence we have an awful lot of very angry people. You cannot imprison one and a half million people and not expect them to get very angry about it. That's exactly what Israel did. That is why the ceasefire broke down. Israel imposed its blockade on the Gaza Strip after Hamas was elected in 2006. The withholding of supplies and increased control of its residents effectively turned Gaza into the world's largest open-air prison. How do you make peace if you don't want to talk to your enemies? I mean, whatever the West and Israel thinks, Hamas won elections fair and square. Uh, so should Israel engage with the democratically elected leaders uh, of Hamas. Uh, Israel should, the United States should, and the European Union should. And we had a brief opportunity two years ago when the Palestinian Unity Government was formed with Ismail Haniyeh as its Prime Minister. Uh, none of us, uh, none of these bodies uh, agreed to talk with that organisation. It collapsed, of course. Before Hamas took full control in June 2007, Gazans were already facing many hardships and as a result of that, unemployment is about 65 percent and poverty is on the rise. More than 80 percent of Gazans rely on humanitarian aid. And if that's not enough, the scarcity of basic supplies has resulted in a sharp rise in prices, making many of the products that are available unaffordable. The list of difficulties is long. It's the loss of land, it's the lack of clean drinking water, it's regular power cuts, it's restrictions on medical care, it's the limitation on the movement of patients. 237 Palestinians have died since October of last year due to not having access to proper health care. And when we talk about negotiations between the Palestinians and the Israelis, negotiations is one thing, but it's also very difficult to talk about negotiations when Israel is constantly creating facts on the ground. Uh, they're talking about negotiations now when Israel has not stopped building settlements or confiscating land in the occupied Palestinian territories. But all the time, you know, we, we expect, we, we, and we put the question at Hamas, Hamas must do this, Hamas must do that, Palestinians must do this or must do that. But Israel must do some things too. Every single country in the world, bar Israel, says stop your program of building settlements, lift the blockade of Gaza. And what happens? The blockade continues and the settlements continue to grow by up to 5% in this year alone, despite international condemnation. I mean, Israel, the question has to be put to Israel as well as to Hamas. What are you doing to promote a peace process? He says stop the missile firing and, 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 and work for peace with Israel and you get your own state. Why don't they have a state on the West Bank then? They have done that and the Israelis continue to steal their land. For months now, they targeted to Israel, Israel showed restraint, we entered this truce when, when it was violated. No, I don't think that they think that the truce was violated first by, the, by Hamas. I think they saw that the Hamas had uh, observed the truce quite strictly uh, for almost six months, uh, or certainly four of the six months. And this was the reason that last week they targeted Israel 80 rockets a day. In May there were 149 rocket attacks. In June, before the ceasefire started on the 18th, there were 84. In the rest of June, just three. Throughout July, August, September and October, there were only 15 attacks, and Israel agrees that none of these rockets were fired by Hamas. But if that was the case, there were no Hamas rockets during the ceasefire. Before November the 4th, there were no Hamas rockets for four months. And that's correct. Isn't it time that the European Union, the European community, take decisive action against these human rights violations?